Suppose we have three jars, A, B, and C. Jar A contains two red marbles and one blue marble. Jar B contains one red marble and two blue marbles. Jar C contains two red marbles and two blue marbles. We select the jar at random. The probability we select A is one fourth. The probability we select B is one fourth. The probability we select C is one half. From the selected jar, we choose one marble. All marbles in the jar have the same chance of being selected. Right, so based on this information, we're asked two questions. The first part is, what is the probability that the chosen marble is red? So first, let's um, complete this tree diagram because that will help us determine the answer to these questions. So we can mark this first point as the starting point. Notice that the first three choices correspond to picking a specific jar, right? Because we have three jars, A, B, and C. Okay, so this is uh, A. Oh, we can mark it from the top. You can say this is A, this is B, and this is C. Okay? And then we have respective uh, marble types. These are red. And these are, as you might have guessed, blue. Okay? So now let's find the individual probabilities for each of these events. So what is the probability of selecting A? It is given to us as... One fourth. The probability of selecting A is one fourth. The probability of select B is one fourth, so we can put one fourth here for this branch. The probability of C is one half. Okay, so this is one half. And now let's talk about finding these probabilities, individual probabilities given the A, B, and C were selected. Okay. So notice. Um, we have to find given that the A was selected. Now take a look at this. A contains two red marbles and one blue marble. Right? So the probability of choosing red out of jar A is going to be two out of three. Right? Because altogether there are two plus one marbles, three marbles. Okay? Two, two of them are red, right? So the probability of selecting red from A would be two thirds. Two out of the total number three. Now, as you might have guessed, since there's nothing else but blue and, and red, that means the probability of selecting blue is just one blue marble out of the total three, right? So that's going to be one third. Now, dealing with jar B, let's see. Jar B contains one red and two blue. So the probability of selecting red is going to be one out of the total, which is the sum of these two, which is three, right? So one third here. One third is the probability. That means one minus one third is going to be two thirds. All right, and you can verify that by taking a look at this: two blue marbles versus the total of three. Right, so two thirds is the probability for blue. Now for C, we have uh, four marbles in total. Right, two plus two, four marbles. Two of them are red. Right, so the probability of selecting red is going to be precisely two fourths or one half. The same thing. So the probability of selecting blue is also going to be one half. Right, so subtract one half from one, you get one half. Right, or you can verify that using the fact that there are two blue, mar two blue marbles out of the total four. Right, so this uh, completes the uh, tree diagram successfully. That means we can start answering these questions. So, now what is the probability that the chosen marble is red? So we have to find the probability of selecting red. Okay, now this we're going to use an interesting formula. Uh, Bayes formula, we know that this can be done by finding the probability of the red occurring together with choosing marble A plus the probability of choosing the red together with choosing marble uh, jar B and then finally the probability of the red being chosen together with marble C. Right? So three ways, basically, of choosing the red, right? Because you can, you can choose the A marble uh, jar and then pick red. You can choose B marble jar and pick red. Or you can choose uh, jar C and pick red. And notice that we're adding it because you cannot have these events happen at the same time. If you choose jar A, that's it, right? There's only one way of choosing red. That's why when, whenever things cannot happen together, we add them up. These are three separate events that we add up together. Right? Because you cannot choose three marbles at the same time. Right? These are separate events. That's why you have to add them up. So now we have to go further. 
Notice that according to the Bayes rule, this first term can be written as uh, a product of individual probability A and also the uh, conditional probability, right? So this means the probability of selecting red given A times the probability of choosing jar, jar A, right? So this is equivalent to this, right? This is a Bayes formula that you should recognize a proper substitution and then the next one is going to be done uh, in the similar fashion the probability of R choosing the red given that you chose jar B times the probability of choosing jar B in the first place okay so and then finally the probability of choosing R given that you chose jar C multiplied by the probability of choosing jar C in the first place all right. So if you do this correctly, now what is the probability of choosing the red given that you chose A? It's just going to be this one, right? Because if you chose A, that's the conditional. That means you're already here. You chose this row. So choosing red is just two-thirds there, right? So two-thirds, okay, times the probability of choosing A in the first place, which is the first branch, one-fourth, plus in the same fashion. Now that you chose B, jar B, so you already wound up here, what's the probability of choosing red, given B, right? So that means from here, you just go this way, right? That's going to be one-third. What's the probability of choosing B in the first place? The first branch here in the middle, one-fourth, right? One-fourth. And then finally, the probability of, uh, given that you chose, uh, that you chose uh, marble, uh, jar C, what is the probability of choosing red, right? So that means it's just this one right here, one half. What is the probability of choosing jar C in the first place? That's one half. All right, so what is that going to be? That's going to be 2 over 4 is going to be one half, so it's going to be 1 6. This is going to be 1 12, and this is going to be 1 fourth. Okay? So now the LCD here is going to be what? The LCD is going to be 12. So here we need to multiply this by 2 over 2. So 2 plus 1 plus, and this thing is going to be what? 3 over 3, right? So 3 times 1 and over LCD of 12. That will give us 6 over 12, which is equivalent to 1 half. Okay, so that would be the answer. That would be the answer for the first part. So the probability that the chosen marble is red is going to be one half. And that, that takes into account all possibilities, all ways that you can go, A or B or C separately. That's why we added them up. And you notice that we added all the respective products associated with those separate probabilities, right? And that all together gives you the one half, all right? So your probability of choosing red happens to be one half, okay? So now the second part is a little bit more interesting. It says, what is the, uh, given that the chosen marble is red, what is the probability that the selected jar was A? So basically what it's asking you is that you choose A given, uh, you, you select a jar A given that you chose uh, the red marble. Okay, now that's that might seem a little bit backwards in, in the way you think about it because <laughs> the red really depends on the jar type that you choose, right? But this question says, given that you selected A, what is the, you know, what is the probability that you selected A? So uh, uh, it says, given that you chose red, what is the probability that you chose um, jar A, right? So saying, given that you wound up with a red marble, what is the probability that you first selected the A to get there? jar A, right? So to do this, notice that we can't solve this probability as it is, okay? Because, uh, because if we wind up with being red, how can we go backwards, right? Because here, notice that we went uh, with these probabilities, R choose A, R choose, uh, sorry, R given A, R given B, R given C. We, we knew that we had to go here or here or here, and then see the individual probability for red for each of these ways that we chose. But here it's backwards. To make it look like it's not backwards, notice that there's another uh, Bayes formula that we can use, and that's going to be the probability of R 
choose A times the probability of choosing A, and that should be divided by this whole thing. But also you have to sum up the other possibility, right? So notice that this looks like this part here, okay? Now that has to be summed up with two more possibilities, and namely the possibilities are right here. The probability that uh, you select R given B times the individual probability of selecting jar B, and then finally the probability that you select R given that you selected C times the probability of selecting jar C. Okay. So this is a very important Bayes formula. And the, the way to remember this is that you simply switch these around. You notice that these are switched. Okay? And then you multiply by the probability of the given uh, event there. Right? So the given A, so that means the probability, individual probability of selecting that A. So, and you, of course, copy down this uh, numerator in the denominator, but you have to sum up all the remaining possibilities. Okay? that you do in the same fashion. R given B times the B, R given C times the individual probability of selecting C, right? So this is the Bayes formula that you must memorize as well. It will be very helpful. So notice that it's not going to be hard to do this now because we have the values already in place uh, from the previous part of the question, right? So we know that the probability of given A times the probability of A is going to be this product right here, right? And that's going to be what? That's going to be simply 1 6, the first term. Okay, so we have to divide 1, 6 by the uh, sum of these three. And the sum is also readily available, right? Because the sum of these three happens to be exactly this whole thing, which is this whole thing, which is this whole thing, which is the answer to part A. Right? So it's just 1 half. So that means it's going to be 1, 6 times the flipped 1 half, which is 2 over 1, which gives us 2 over 6, which simplifies to 1 third. Okay? So one third tells you that it's going to be the probability that you selected jar A given that you selected the marble red, red marble. All right. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.